Hello and welcome to the Sonic Academy Beginner's Guide to the Music Industry. So you've got some tracks finished and you think that you are ready to get them out into the world. This is the point where you need to start thinking about how the music industry works. So let's start with the most obvious question. What is the music industry? The music industry is basically a collection of organisations and individuals involved in the creation, production, distribution, promotion and essentially monetization of music. It encompasses a wide range of sectors including recording, performing, publishing, management, marketing, streaming services, the list literally goes on and on. In 2022, the global income from the music industry stood at $26.2 billion, a growth of 9% from the previous year, with streaming taking the largest slice at 67%. But physical sales, performance, syncs and downloads are still generating income for musicians all around the world. While there's no doubt that over the last couple of decades, the way we consume music has changed in many ways, a lot of the core concepts around how the music industry works have stayed the same. So in this series of videos, we're going to look at some of the factors that you'll have to think about if you want to take your music career to the next level. We'll be looking at some of the core roles that are at the centre of the industry and talk to some key industry personnel about their jobs and find out what advice they'd give to anyone starting out today. A record label is an organisation that works with artists to release and promote their music. Record labels can be of varying size, from global giants such as Universal Music Group down to smaller scale independent labels. Typically, a record label's role is to handle many aspects of the artist's career, such as recording, promotion, distribution and overall artist development. It's their job to put everything in place to give you the greatest chance of success. If you're a producer trying to get your track signed for the first time, you're probably better placed to approach small independent labels. Indie labels tend to be a bit more artist friendly, allowing them to retain a lot more creative control. Here's DJ and independent record label owner Mark Sherry from Outburst Records. Hi guys, my name's Mark Sherry. I'm a professional DJ and producer and also a mastering engineer. And I run three record labels, Outburst Records, Outburst Twilight and Techburst Records. Outburst and Twilight are obviously the trance labels and Techburst is for techno. I basically wanted to start my own record label so that I could have complete control over my own releases. I could control the quality. It's up to me when I release my own tracks, deciding what rec you know artists that I work with, not just guys that I've met along my you know throughout the, the years in my career, but also trying to give the newcomers a, a help as well. I think that's really important to try and think about you know who's going to be who's going to be the next big thing in a few years' time. I think the biggest challenges you can face with having a record label is just basically the, the time factor. It takes up a lot of time. You know, speaking for myself. I'm doing the A&R, I'm going back and forth with the guys telling them how to try and improve their tracks. It does eat up a lot of time so you have to you know, keep that in consideration. I think one of the, 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 the kind of biggest obstacles you can come up against as well is learning how to use Facebook properly, learning how to use your dark ads, uh, you know, learning about the algorithms, learning about the back end of Facebook. So you really need to have either your own knowledge on social media or trying to find somebody that can do a lot of that for you. It's fine to do it yourself in the beginning, but I think long term, I think it's really key to have a professional social media expert, you know, some kind of guru that's going to really help you with that. I think also as well as just trying to get the label noticed, it's all down to the music, so it's really up to you. If you're the a and for your own label, then you have to pick the absolute biggest tracks you can find whether it's newcomers or whether it's some of the more established guys, the, the tracks have to basically do the talking for you. Um, so make sure when you start off, you've got a really good bunch or a good batch of records ready to release with on the label and you know hopefully try and get some people talking about the label in the beginning because that really kind of sets you up for the next few months and then the next few years. The best advice I can give artists wanting to start a record label is Basically, it's consistency, you know, so not just your own releases, but the other labels, that, the other tracks that you're signing as well, the other artists that you're signing, they have to be consistently good. It's great to have, you know, two or three big singles in a row, whether it's f by yourself or another artist, but if the fourth release or the fifth release isn't as good, you can very, very quickly lose momentum. And I think you have to have a, a game plan for each, each release as well. I think at an absolute minimum, um, allow yourself four weeks of promotion for each release 
So release the artwork, release some blurbs on there, uh, get your clips up on YouTube and um, sorry on, on SoundCloud and then on YouTube. Um, and then leading up to the maybe the week or two weeks before you really want to start pushing the release, try and get it out to the A-list of DJs, actually target the big guys like Armin, Marcus Schultz, you know, all these kind of guys. Try and get your tracks played on all the radio shows that you want. So target your target your actual artists that you want to have supporting your releases and supporting the label.